Hey gang, Diana here. Welcome to the studio and an unboxing video. And this is a bunch of watercolor supplies that I recently ordered from Dick Blick. So I'm going to pull everything out of the box. Here's everything in here. And I'm going to pull it all out and we're going to take a look at it. First few things are kind of boring, but I thought I'd share them. One is just a refill, an archival ink, jet black, because my pad was drying out. And then a couple of Liquitex gesso and a Liquitex matte medium. I use Liquitex mainly because it comes out of the bottle easy and I don't have to open a jar. I think this is probably a, a, one of my most important studio tools and I, if you want to learn how to use one if you're not sure why you would need one, let me know and I can make a video about color wheels. So the first thing is this Neptune. I don't know if you've ever tried these Neptune brushes, but these are fantastic brushes. This is from Princeton. I have one other one that I absolutely adore. And this is a one inch oval wash. So soft, so soft. And this is a little different and I'll explain it more when I start to use it and when I demo using this this brush, but it's just a gorgeous thing too. Um, it's called a quill and these are measured slightly different than the other brushes. So you can see how big it is and I forget it's a number six. So just for fun, let's see that's a four. That's a four. So a six in any other brush would be just a wee bit bigger than this. So they're different. So I'll talk about all of these brushes closer. Now, starting with the two, I did get some black velvet. I've been hearing about these brushes for some time now. And I just filled in a couple of areas in my brushes that didn't. I didn't have the best brushes. And I think these are supposed to be very good. I've, I saw many reviews and I'm looking forward to doing my own review. I got a two, which is minuscule, and a four. And I've never worked with brushes this size, but I'm going to be doing some work that will require them. And then a 10 and a 16. I tend to like the biggest brush I can find. And my favorite parent brush, is this Escoda Versatil and it's a 22 so it's but it comes to a point you see so it gives you a lot of flexibility so let me see then in addition to that I got this four uh, watercolor sable rigger brush and if you look at that head you can see how long that is so I'm looking forward to, to trying this for more linear elements in my painting Now, before I forget to tell you this, I've had students who didn't were unaware of this. These brushes have been starched, I think you call it, before shipping to protect the bristles. So they're quite uh, pointy and stiff. So you'll soak them in water, not soak them, but put them in water. Let me grab some. Many brushes also come with this plastic collar, and you never want to try to put that back on. That's only to protect the bristles again in shipping. So I'm just swishing this brush around into the water until the starch is dissolved and it really doesn't take much time at all. And you just want to do that until the bristles are, boy that really does feel like it's got a nice belly full of water there. So that is a good thing. Um, the belly is the this area of the brush that is thick, um, and then if once if that gets full of water, you're in good good shape to do a lot of painting. I just had a few that needed to be replaced, and the ultramar French ultramarine blue. I've swatched all uh, these out and I will link the playlist for my swatch videos. And uh, New Gamboge, which is a delightful orange-yellow. 
It's a great warm yellow. Sap green, which is probably one of my favorite colors of all time. And perylene, which I decided I should get um, because it's a different green from what I have in my in my palette at the moment. Now this moon glow was one that I just I just couldn't resist it. So the moon glow is a dark color. It is um, a blue. Oh my goodness, yeah. It's like a, you know, it could be used as a shadow color or in, like a neutral tint or a Payne's gray. It's a quiet blue, but it has a good bit. Let me see if I can get some straight for you. A good bit of um, deepness and richness to it. So you can see that. Now, I will swatch all these out in another video, but I couldn't wait to get to these colors. And um, I did a class this morning, and most of my, my uh, supplies are in the car, and I'm kind of tired. So I thought I would just swatch out the couple that I couldn't wait for, and Moon Glow was one of them. Very nice. And you can see the way it's granulating there, I think. It granulates down with a pinkish color. And then there's other blue, another blue in it. That's the thing with some of these watercolors that has really just captured my interest. And it's I think it's amazing the way the colors work together. There's that purpley blue that you see when it first comes out of the tube. And then you can see this mass uh, color here, and it's that purpley blue, but it's separating out into this blue, and I think you can see right there, and then the red, the, the burgundy color, just gorgeous color. Oh, wow, I just went to lift some of this color, and look at what's under there. This is just amazing. It's an aqua blue under there. This is a beautiful color and there's going to be a lot of use for me with this color. It wasn't just the name Moon Glow, which I admit was a great name. Okay, now the rest of the colors, wow, I just can't stop admiring that. It's gorgeous. It's almost like a teal blue. This is just threads from my my cloth. The rest of the colors I got are Primatec colors, genuine colors. We And the Primatecs are the um, colors made from minerals. So there should be a huge amount of granulation in these colors. So I'm going to just swatch out, I think I'm going to swatch out the green Appetite. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. And, oh, the amethyst. I'm just going to do these two. And then I will come back. Remember, I keep saying that. Okay, so the green appetite genuine. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It took me forever to make this order because I was really being very careful already with the wicking. It is beautiful. Okay, so... I don't know if you just saw that moving, but these are super magical. I'm going to bring it up closer to the camera so you can really take a look at it. Um, I am, by the way, using... This is Strathmore 400 paper. It's very dark, and the granulation is gorgeous. There was a brush hair in this one, and that is not cool. So if these silver brushes, they're called silver black velvet. If I have hope these are not shedding, because that would be a huge bummer. But anyway, look at that. It's got like all this granulation and texture. It's amazing, really. It's got like a brown color and a golden okay we're gonna let that dry a little bit more and I'm gonna try out this amethyst genuine 
Now, I'm not sure. Some of these genuines do not have... Don't say... This one's actually coming out. I hate when this happens. But I'll put it into one of my dishes. Some of these do not say um, Primatech on them, but it's a this is a beautiful purple. Gorgeous. Gorgeous color. Okay, so I really amazingly did not have had like two purples on my palette in my stash. So I'm going to just rinse this brush and see how it spreads. It's moving. I wish you could, yeah, just get a little closer. The edge here is gorgeous too. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. I can't wait to swatch all of these out and show them to you. Just what happens when you... Hmm. So yummy. If you look at these, the Amethyst Genuine, what happened, and the other thing with these is there's a very... I mean, with the Primatex, Primatech colors, is there is a subtle sheen on these colors from the um, stone uh, that they're made from. And the again, the granulation. So it's going to add te a texture to my work that it will be really great for me. And I'll come around when I swatch them out. You'll be able to take a close look at them and see if there's anything that you would like in this in these colors and I hope that you'll visit my other swatches too to see what you might want. I'm going to be doing a six color it's called a split palette so I'm going to be doing that oh probably in a couple weeks or three weeks and that's a really basic fabulous palette to work with so I'm going to be swatching that out, and I think if you're a beginner, but you want to invest in some good paints, that's the, that's the video to wait for. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for coming by and spending a little bit of your day with me. Thumbs up, subscribe, share, and like. Bye now.